Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So yeah, <laughs> I'm in my car, I'm in the parking lot. My son's game starts in 10 minutes. So I have 10 minutes. It's a really, really busy time of year right now. Um, but I wanted to do a quick episode talking about a couple of things, mostly about the steering wheel that's like right in the corner of this video shot right now. Um, but first of all, I, I did want to say a really cool thing uh, just got posted on my Discord. Again, if you're not one of my Patreon members, you should definitely check it out. You get access to the Discord channel and all that good stuff. Uh, but anyway, somebody pointed out today on Discord that Pirelli, which is a tire manufacturer, has made at least what they claim is the first EV-specific tire the Pirelli P0 Elect. I couldn't find the exact pricing on it. I don't think it's actually been released just yet, although they said March 15th it was gonna be released. Anyway, I couldn't find a pricing, but I looked at their regular P0 car, uh, tires and they're rather expensive. <laughs> they, they, I think they're around $300 a tire, so 1,200-ish, you know, at least 1,000 even with discounts, um, dollars for all four tires for the car. Interestingly enough, this car now has 23,000 something miles on it, and so I actually, you know, within the next 10,000 miles or so going to need to replace that. So I will be interested in looking at that. These particular tires, they say specifically, they were doing two things. Number one, rolling resistance reduction. And that's a big deal. Um, because they say it saves 15% on rolling resistance and rolling resistance, of course, increases resistance and drag on the car, which means you have to use more batteries. So therefore you can actually go further in the car before you have to recharge, which is nice. So anyway, that's really cool. And then the second one is road noise and that for everybody who has an EV, if you don't have a big loud internal combustion engine making a lot of noise, you do notice the road noise much, much more than you would have previously. So they say that there's there's materials and things inside the tires that are there to help to reduce the road noise. Also, uh, you know, EV cars are very heavy because of the batteries. And so they've built extra duty sidewalls, essentially, so the tires don't get squished. And so anyway, they have a 50,000 mile um, lifetime warranty. I always find a 40,000 mile tire lasts somewhere around 25 to 30,000 miles. You know, it depends on how you use it. Um, and then a 50,000 mile tire is probably in the range of 35 to 40,000 miles, but still that's good, right? I mean, if, if the tire lasts an extra 50% past what a cheaper tire would last, you're buying fewer tires in the lifetime. So all of that's good. Uh, and oh, and the final, final part, obviously they say because of the high torque of electric vehicles that the, it's a very grippy tire as well. So it does really well in terms of like gripping onto the road. Second thing that was a new announcement that is very recent is that Mercedes-Benz has very proudly announced, and I'm going to put a little asterisk here, they very proudly announced that they have the first um, passenger car where they're going to take legal liability for the car when it's in full self-driving mode. So Tesla, if you don't know this, Tesla does not take full self, uh, does not take legal responsibility. If you know, if you put it in full self-driving mode, it immediately puts up a little line that says, you are responsible for this. Make sure you keep your hand on the steering wheel, which is what I'm gonna get to in just a minute. At all times, you know, you're legally liable for all of this stuff. So Mercedes is saying it's only a select, like set of highways and, and thoroughfares that it will do it on. But when you're on it, they will take legal li liability. They'll be responsible for the car if there's an accident with it. There's a really, really big asterisk with this though because the maximum speed that it will go where they're liable is 40 miles an hour. And any like large thoroughfare type of road, I think, you know, it says a select number of roads. I believe this is more or less like highway types of situations where it's on a highway, there's not traffic lights and things. There aren't any highways that are under 55 or at least 45 at the very lowest speed. So they're kind of playing a little bit of a trick here. This is more like a marketing thing in my mind because they're saying, look, we take legal liability for it, but you can't drive the speed limit. If you can only go 40 miles an hour in an area that's 50, 55, 60, whatever, you know, <laughs> you're not even legally allowed to drive on a highway at 40 miles an hour because it's below the minimum or maybe it's right at the minimum speed limit. But anyway, so that's kind of cheesy that they're doing that. It's too bad because it's actually something that's really interesting. In the article, it was interesting and I'll link the article, of course, I'll link both of the articles in the description. 
but uh, it said you can imagine the lawyers, the ambulance chasing lawyers licking their lips because it's one thing like if I get in an accident and God forbid I hurt somebody or something like that, you can sue me, but I'm worth no money, right? So my insurance company will pay out something. So you might get a couple hundred thousand dollars for being injured. If, on the other hand, Mercedes-Benz hurts somebody, oh, wow, you know, that's a big payday. So, so, you know, they are taking a risk, but it's also something that's going to have to happen over time. But it is a little bit cheesy, and it feels kind of cheesy that what they're doing is they're organizing this in such a way that it sounds like it's not really a viable solution, not really something that you're going to actually be able to utilize because, you know, 40 miles an hour is just not fast enough for it to be reasonable. Okay, so that gets me to the big part of this particular talk, which actually has to do with legal liability, and that is steering wheels. Um, when I first got full self-driving, the, the fact that you had to jiggle the steering wheel and move it around a little bit made sense because Tesla did not use the camera that is right up here that's looking at me right now. So Tesla didn't use that. They only had that as the evidence, of course, that you were paying attention to the road, right? So that's all that they had. They have since, of course, incorporated the camera. I know this because if I look down, if I pick up my cell phone, my cell phone's when I'm recording, but you know, my sanitizer bottle. <laughs> but if I take my eyes off the road for more than a couple of seconds, it immediately pops up an alert on the screen and beeps at me. It's a nice beep. It's like beep, beep, beep. And it says, hey, yo, you need to be paying attention to the road, put your phone down, that kind of stuff. So it's clear that the visual system works. And the full self-driving beta is getting so freaking good that I don't really have to intervene when I'm driving or when it's driving very much at all anymore. And so at this point, it's really becoming a big annoyance to have to jiggle the steering wheel. So I'm suggesting to Tesla that now might be the time, at least for the FSD beta drivers, and I know there's a bunch of legal ramifications and all of that kind of stuff, but we've already proven that we're safe drivers, right? We're people, and Canada is going to get it soon. They're supposed to get it this weekend, so <laughs> here's hoping that Canada gets full self-driving soon. But but anyway, all the people who are getting it right now are, are testing out in like, I think 96 is the lowest score, or 95, but anyway, very, very out of 100, out, you know, so we're very... Um, high-end drivers or at least prove that we can drive at a very safe level. So we've already proven that it would be really, really nice if Tesla would allow us to not have to jiggle the steering wheel all the, all the time because it's a weird thing and it seems like such a first world problem, but it's actually becoming like really annoying to do it. <laughs> it. Again, like I said, there was a time at the beginning of this whole beta process where it made much more sense. And because you had to do interventions and stuff and you're kind of like, just like this all the time, you know, going like, oh my gosh, when's it gonna mis make a mistake? And it made a lot of sense to, to keep jiggling the steering wheel. And especially because the camera wasn't even functional at that point, it didn't do anything for safety. But now that the camera is actually functional and it's actually looking at you and it's saying like, I can tell when you're drive when you're paying attention or not. And it's really good at it too, right? So I've even tried things where I've like kind of tried to like cheat and pretend like I was like falling asleep or something. And after a few seconds, it does, you know, it does notify me that there's something wrong and it's like, hey, pay attention. So, so anyway, only, only when I'm driving like really slow, <laughs> just FYI, don't try that at home. I wouldn't suggest that. But what I'm saying is that the interventions are getting so few and especially when you start looking on the highways and stuff like that it's just like you can go for a long time you know on a highway on a road trip you could go for 30 40 50 minutes maybe you know up until the next charging thing without really having to interact with the car and so the fact that every 30 seconds you have to do you know this kind of thing where you jiggle the steering wheel around it has become very annoying and it's I don't know. Ford advertises all the time that they you can do hands-free driving as long as the road is perfectly straight and never turns or something. But anyway, so it's quite clear that legally there must be some precedent that they could do this. I'm asking if Tesla might perhaps consider doing that for us drivers at least on the highway or something because it it's gotten to the point where the driving is so good that it's becoming like really annoying to have to jiggle the steering wheel. And like I said, it seems like a first world problem, but it, it's one of those things where if you didn't have to do this, and I, again, you know, you got to pay attention and everything, but just to be able to sit back and just kind of like 
you know, watch the road, even though you're still legally responsible and have your hands close to the steering wheel, but not on them. Uh, you know, I'm not suggesting that they do what Mercedes Benz has done yet and say like, we're gonna take over legal responsibility. I don't think the car is quite there yet. I don't think they should do that. That's a bad idea. <laughs> they don't wanna put their company in jeopardy over some stupid lawsuit. But anyway, what I do think is that they could get rid of the hands on the steering wheel at all time and just say instead, as a primary thing, are you looking? And then if the person either is obviously not looking, like if you're looking like this the whole time, and then it starts saying like, now you need to do it. Or if you get three strikes on a trip, maybe, or two strikes or one strike, where it's like, you're clearly not paying attention. You're like texting on your phone. Then it's like, okay, for the rest of the drive, you have to jiggle the steering wheel. So anyway, I think that there are ways of doing this that are relatively easy to implement. And like I said, since Ford has already shown that at least apparently legally it's possible to do this, then I really think that Tesla should go ahead and do it too. It would make drives really, really nice. It would be super pleasant not to have to do that. It would be nice just to be able to go to work and just put my hands on my, on my knees, you know, whatever. Not that I'm doing anything distracted, but I'm paying attention but I don't just have to go like this. <laughs> so anyway, it used to not be so much of a problem when interventions were common. Now that interventions are getting to almost nothing, except for when I feel like intervening because I feel like it's not driving in the fast enough lane or something. Now I feel like it's time for Tesla to go ahead and step up and make it so that it will use the camera as the primary mode of determining if you're paying attention to the road. So anyway, please do Tesla. I hope you, uh, I hope you can manage that. Um, a quick reminder, you know, make sure that you like the video and subscribe, of course, but also if you're going to be in Austin, Texas, definitely let me know because we're going to be there, me and Misinformation from the 6th through the 9th, so we're super excited about that. And of course, the people who are on Discord, my Patreon patrons, we are trying to set up something, a, a meeting in Austin, so if you want to join us, definitely let us know and definitely join the Patreon team so you can be part of that. In the meantime, I will see you in the next video. Everybody have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.